Okay, this is part two of my brother's DS games. Part three altogether of the DS games. 2.0. And uh, here's Princess Peach. Uh, this game is kind of an odd game. I mean, it's kind of fun. It's also kind of sexist because Peach has moods. Like, one, one power, um, you're like sad, another power you're mad, another power you're extremely happy, another mood um, you're like happy but not like really happy I guess, you can see it, there's a, there's a picture of the moods right there, so yeah this game is kind of weird, but it's, at least Peach has it's her own game for once. Um, there's no multiplayer, no mini games. The only thing that's uh, next and exclusive in this is a rubble pack they can use. But, you know, if you like platformers, you'd probably like this. Um, this game scored a seven point two on IGN and a seven point eight on. Oh, no, 7.2 on GameSpot and 7.8 on IGN. So it's a it's okay game. The one thing that I experienced with it is that um, it's just the, a lot of the same th throughout the game. You might get a one little power up further on, but there's nothing that really draws you in. Like on Metroid, you get more power ups further and further throughout the game. But I guess with this you get more power ups. Like, I don't know. I, I never really pay attention to it. But, you know, it's good enough. No, I wouldn't say I must have, though. Game number nine Yoshi's Island DS. This game doesn't have any exclusives. If you look on there, there's. No exclusives on the box, but uh, you got new abilities. You can be Baby Mario, Baby Peach, Baby DK, or Baby Wario, and that's basically what it. If you've played Yoshi's Island, the first one, then you like this one. This one scored. A 9.1 and 8.0, so it's pr be probably pretty good, but I never paid attention to it because my brother would always, play, would always play on it. And then once I thought about playing on it, he just got another one and I played that game. So if you like platformers, then you'd probably like this. Probably. Game number 10. Is Pokemon Troze. This I think is a must have because there's not another game like it. This one ha has two exclusives uh, one and two download play. And the one and two multi card play. Yeah. And. Basically what you do is you have Pokemon falling down on the grid and you move them left and right and down. When you move one down, it comes back up on the top and falls back down. And then you can move one up, but it only goes one up. And if, if it doesn't fit, then it'll fall back down. And kind of like um, columns or oh crap, what the other flash, the other Puzzle game. I forget it, but yeah, there's a picture of it right there. If you can see. And once you get a match of four of the same Pokemon in, in a row going either horizontally or vertically, then it pops, and then you can get a match of two to three to four or five. It doesn't matter how much there is in a row as long as there's more than one. And that's what makes this one like the multiplayer is really good. But the bad thing about this game 
is that it's incredibly hard on one player mode. It'll start off like pretty easy, but then it'll go very hard. But still, there's there's not there's not another game like this for DS. That's why it's a must have. And this game got a seven point one on GameSpot and and uh, eight point zero on IGN. I think this is a must have because personally. All DS games should have multi-card or single-card um, download play support. I mean, at least throw in a couple mini games in there, even if they're crappy. And this is the game eleven. Kirby Squeak Squad. And this game, well, it's it's very easy. I mean. A four-year-old could beat it in a week, or three days, in fact, because each level is about two or three minutes long, and you have two or four single card download play for the mini games, no co-op like the last one for the Game Boy Advance, and two to four multi-card play. Um, in this game, you get new power-ups, and new abilities you can upgrade your ability like for the game you can um, get a scroll and so you get more moves and then the new gimmick was the new thing was you can take two moves and blend together and make a new move you don't do that you just take two moves blend them together and you randomly get a new move but it's not new it's just one you've seen before it's just blended together like to roll a dice for another move in other words, Kirby 64, Legend of the Seven Shards. That one you can take like two fire moves and make a new fire move. This one's not like that. However, it's it's, a, it's an alright Kirby game. It'll hold your attention for a while, but then it might be so easy, it might actually lose your attention. This game, if I had it down, oh, oh, it got a 7.7 on GameSpot and a 7.8 on IGN. So it's a so-so game. Just it's just way too easy. But if you're a true true blue Kirby fan, then you'll probably fall for it. And the last DS wait no, this can't be the last. Um I have like probably three more DS games on on my big list. So stay tuned to part four.